All right, let's go ahead and call this meeting of public transit to order. Um, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Feldman. Here. John Bessart. Peter Luciani. Julie Renahan. Here. Tim Elliott. Robert Larson. Here. All right, and, and then you you caught Dawn. I don't know if her mic was working, but you caught that she's here, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Um, so do we need to add members then, John? Or are we okay with who we've got? Four or six, is that nice? We have four. Okay, so Liz and Mary, yeah, if you guys have other stuff you need to go do, thank you so, so much for <laughs> being here to get us started, but of course you're welcome to stay. Yeah. If you could just do a roll call on the action item and on the minutes, that would be great. Right, next is public comment, is that okay? Yes. yes. Okay, so next up is public comment. So any of you have for us? Yeah. I can read the public comment. There is one, um, Joe Amor. The subject is pedestrian underpass at the Village Park Metro Station. The Villa Park Metro Station is one of the few metro stations on the UP West Line that doesn't provide a safe option for crossing the three tracks at that location. The Union Pacific Railroad owns and controls that line. Villa Park Metro patrons and foot traffic along Ardmore Avenue are often blocked by slow moving or stopped freight trains. Also, Metro trains are often switched from their normal track with little or no warning, creating a situation that has caused people to ignore active grade crossing warning signals to cross in front of approaching trains. Funding sources cannot be utilized at this time because Illinois Commerce Commission rules require the municipality to fund the design phase. The village currently cannot meet this obligation. The village of Villa Park has created a bike, pedestrian, and transit subcommittee that advises on these matters, and I serve as chair. Would the county assist sourcing or provide funding opportunities once design costs have been identified? We pledge to work with Metro Union Pacific state and federal agencies to provide a safer alternative at this location. Please contact me through the village manager's office at your earliest opportunity. Thank you. Is that our, sorry, our only public comment today? Yes, it is. Okay, um, so just briefly, John, let's you and I touch base later today and go ahead and get it contact with Joe and, um, Member Chaplain, I think that's your district. So if you want to be involved, just let me know and we'll go ahead and loop you in. I know Metro and safety and all that is something you've been really involved in. So we'll go ahead and loop you in and we'll go ahead and get back to them. Thank you for that. Um, next item is approval of minutes. Do so we need a motion? So moved. Okay, in a second. Member <laughs> Larson, you want a second? All right. <laughs> Any discussion or questions on the minutes? All right, let's go ahead and take a roll call, please. Mr. Selman. Aye. John Sart. Aye. Peter Bisciani. <coughs> Julie Renahan. Aye. Tim Elliott. Robert Larson. Aye. All right, thank you. Those are approved. Um, I don't have much under Chairman's remarks. I just wanna um, thank Member Renahan for the item that we'll be voting on for number seven. I know she worked very closely with staff to get this um, study started and I'm, I know we're all really excited to see the results. Um, that's all I have for Chairman's remarks. Next up is staff updates, John. Thank you, uh, just a couple of quick ones. Uh, mobility plan, um, the scope is currently under review by the service boards and uh, the final scope and RFP are scheduled out um, and will be posted by RTA uh, in late October, early November. Um, so we're looking forward to getting that underway as well. Um, and in front of you today, we have uh, a resolution on the I for an intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage and IDOT authorizing a grant award for the Tran Transportation Service Plan for Little Brook Corners. And um, following approval of this, we're looking to uh, post a, you know, a, a notice uh, uh, under QBS in December uh, and consultant selection will be sometime uh, probably late quarter, uh, first quarter of 21. So 
uh, that's where we stand today. Uh, thank you very much. That's all I have. Ashley, I think you're muted. Thanks. <laughs> Um, so next up is our resolution, it's PTR 0546-20. It's an intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage and Illinois uh, DOT, authorizing a grant award for the production of a transportation service plan for the Willowbrook Corners area. The county is to be reimbursed 100% or up to $50,000. Do we have a motion? So moved. Can we have a second? Remember, right hand, did you say second? Sorry, I just think it didn't pick up. I said, yeah, either or. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll do the second, that's fine. All right, any other discussion on this item before we vote? Yeah, member in hand. Yeah, I just want to say um, thanks to John Loper for, you know, helping connect up here because this is a, this truly is a transportation desert. It's a low income area. And I think, you know, if we can bring transportation or at least consider transportation, um, it helps the economic opportunity and just kind of raises all ships. So, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a great first step, but, you know, and I appreciate, John, your, your digging in. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Member Renahan. All right. Any further discussion? All right. Seeing none, let's go ahead and do a roll call. Feldman? Aye. Don Sark? Aye. Peter DiCiani? Julie Renahan? Aye. Kim Elliott? Robert Larson? Aye. Great, thank you. Motion passes. And then next up, we have our partner reports. Um, looks like we have Pace. Do you want to start with Pace? Sure. All right. Hey, Chris, go ahead. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you and good morning to everyone. It's nice seeing everyone. Um, so I'm going to give a little update on where we're at with the pandemic and service, as well as an update on our upcoming public hearings. So as you know, ridership has been down um, significantly. Sales tax funding has been down. Ridership at the height of the pandemic was roughly 70% down in ridership. We're at around 50% right now. So we are recovering. Um, we don't think that, we think that this is pretty much where we're gonna be stabilized for quite some time. Sales tax is down, again, estimates, but we're looking at most likely 25 to 30% down in sales tax, which is our primary source of funding. Um, and also we did some adjustments to service back in May. If you recall, we, we did some service reductions as well as suspensions back in May. Um, out of those services, in, in order to, uh, I guess, plan for the future with our budget, one of the things we are proposing in the budget is that we run status quo, meaning what we're providing right now currently is what we're planning on doing in our 2021 budget. So all the services that are temporary reduced or suspended are in the public hearing budget for reduction and or suspension. What does that mean for DuPage County? Out of those 100 routes, roughly 46 serve DuPage County. Um, out of those 46, 44 of them are what we refer to as commuter feeder services. So they operate during the rush hours only, morning and evening rush hours, going to and from the train stations. Um, the, the remaining two routes are all day fixed route services, and those are not being proposed for reduction or suspension, rather, but reduction. So um, Route 319 that serves the Bensonville area, um, we are reducing or we have reduced it by eight trips out of 23 trips. And Route 332, which serves Elmhurst, Oak Brook area, um, we've reduced that schedule by two trips out of a total of 16. And really it's just more of, there's not the activity, there's not the ridership, um, to, to sustain or resume services, really, we are working with, as much as possible, the centris, central business district, district to try to get an idea, a feel of when they're looking to bring back employees. And what we're hearing is a lot of them are remote at minimum till the end of the year. And then even then coming back, what that's going to look like. There's just 
way too many unknowns at this time. Metro's ridership is still, I believe it's 90% down still. And so we're, we'll work closely with Metro, but right now the best moving forward temp temporarily or permanently, we, we really, we really don't know at this point um, is to move forward with that in our legal notice for our budget. That being said, typically at around this time of year, I bring the little budget books um, to the group. So you have like a detailed breakdown on what we're proposing to do. Um, we don't have that information available just yet. We're still waiting on our marks from the RTA. However, our board meets uh, the 21st of October, so we should be able to release the full budget details at that time. Um, the hearings, typically we hold 13 hearings every year. We're going to be holding six hearings and they will be virtual, so this is the first time for us to hold virtual public hearings. And how that will work is um, for each county there will be a pre-recorded public hearing statement that is presented by your representative for DuPage County. Director Marcucci sits on the DuPage board um, as your representative. So he will do a pre-recorded statement and it will be uploaded on a particular day. For DuPage County, it, the hearing is scheduled for Tuesday, October 27th at 4 p.m. As far as providing public comment, we, we like in years past, they can provide that public comment through our public hearing page on the website, as well as a phone number, leave a message, uh, and by regular mail, they can mail a letter. And you do not have to wait until the public hearing date for to page. If you, let's say if you wanted to provide some sort of comment, um, as soon as the public comment portion of the public hearing is open, which will be the that Friday prior, you can provide comment at any time. Doesn't you don't need to wait until the hearing is posted for DuPage County. Um, again, we're hopeful that with the financial position that it improves, and then we can you know start reestablishing some level of services. But this is what we're dealing with at at this time. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you, Chris. Uh, Member Renahan. Hi, Chris. Hi. How are you? Um, Good. A little pain telling us this, <laughs> um, but I, you know, I wanted to say, um, you know, is there any look in terms of, um, you know, there's, you know, everybody, you know, like people who use PACE, they're, they're used to using it. Um, is there any kind of priority in terms of people who are low income or, you know, our brown and, you know, black populations, people that really rely on that to get to work, they really don't have another option. Is PACE taking this into consideration when they, they look at cutting routes and, Yes. Yeah. So, as I mentioned, as far as the the three services go, and it's not to uh, say that they're doing anything different than what we are. Our our ridership, in comparison to CTAs and metros, isn't as down. And the the reason why is the service that we are providing. It are to typically our demographic is low income transit dependent individuals. So these individuals are still using the service. And that, that was another one of the other reasons why when we looked at doing these suspensions earlier in May is we really needed that equipment. Um, f among other reasons, ridership was down. There was no ridership um, going on Metro to downtown, but also that equipment was critical in providing some level of social distancing. So we're trying to keep our bus loads at 15%. 15 passengers are under. So we've, although our ridership went down 70%, we're back up to roughly about 50% of our ridership. So there's, that is taken into consideration. For example, the, the two routes that we looked, um, that I mentioned earlier, that we reduce service, we're looking at trips and, and making adjustments to, to try to, as much as we can, address the needs of the riders while still trying to figure out how we're going to fill our budget gaps. Um, we, we did receive some CARES funding. So overall, I think we're looking at, for next year, a roughly $60 million um, deficit. Our, our budget is around $200 million. So um, we're hoping that the CARES funding will help address a lot of the shortfall as far as these suspensions, making these suspensions permanent. Um, 2022 is going to be um, 
very concerning for us if we don't receive some additional funding. But yes, sorry, that was a long response to your question. No, I, no, I'll knock on your door if I want to know more. So. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Any thank other you. questions for Chris today? One other question for you, Chris. Can you clarify your, your statement on the feeder services, the 44 feeder services? Those are the ones that you put into, into suspended mode? So yes, in, in back in May, everything that happened in May, so all of the suspensions and reductions that happened in May um, are what is in the legal notice for the 2021 budget. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the, these have already, it's already status quo. This is already happening. This just makes it official. Thank you. Great, thank you so much for joining thank us you. today, Chris. Right. Do we have anyone from Metro or Pace today, John? Uh, or Metro and RTA, sorry. Not, not. Uh, I, I haven't seen uh, Dimitri on uh, on no, the call. Not. Okay, um, that's all right. We I do have a, a quick, a short report uh, from RTA, uh, who made a couple of interesting comments. Um, um, they are. They mentioned that uh, for customers who have a reduced fare or ride-free permit that has expired or will expire during the pandemic, which is, uh, I think they're calling it this year, the RTA will be extending a one-time courtesy of automatically renewing eligibility for those folks. Um, That's great. Uh, they, and I'll, I'll post. I'll post that as well on our web page. Um, how they can actually do that and get get a permit uh, for the first time. I also mentioned that under the um, travel training program that RTA is temporarily canceling all scheduled travel training sessions, but they do say that they're offering online presentations to agencies who work with older adults and people with disabilities. Hmm. That presentation helps individuals learn about their public transit options and RTA program. So it appears that they're, they're basically substituting the online for the in-person uh, travel training work. Um, and I'll just, I'll make sure to uh, file their report, you know, with the, with the minutes for the next meeting, okay? Hey, that's awesome, thank you. And you guys, you all remember we had really robust um, updates from our partners last week, or last month, so yeah. they certainly deserve a month off. Um, okay, so that's the end of our partner reports. Um, under old business, I just, in the minutes, you guys probably saw this in the packet, is the presentation from the RTA update last month. Um, I had found it really interesting how they broke down the different scenarios. Um, and I thought the way they sort of are trying to look at the whole, you know, microcosm of how people return to work and safety and all that, I thought would be helpful and possibly um, be helpful for, you know, we're all in other committees and making decisions sort of on the same set of data. So. That's just in your packets if you want to review it. And I'm sure if you have questions, the RTA would be happy to answer. Um, does anybody else have anything else under our old business today? All right, seeing none. Anybody under new business? Have any other additional comments for us today? All right, seeing none, without objection, we're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.